So how does Spelljammer 5th edition stack up? Honestly, I was expecting to be disappointed by this. All it would take is one clunker among these three books at this price point to really sink this whole box set. You have three short books that add up to 192 pages, which is kind of the average length of a single book, but the original price point was $70 US. That's a lot more than most single books by at least $20. However, at the time of release, prices that I'm seeing out there are generally cheaper than that. That changes it quite a bit. I also was pleasantly surprised by just how good these books seem to have turned out. I really like the formatting of having three individual books. As a DM, I may want to have two different pages open at once. I may need the monster stats here and the adventure there. Having them broken up where I can actually have multiple pages open at the same time on a table is really a great idea to me. Speaking of pages, I noticed that this book, as well as the recently released Dragons of Storm Wreck Isle starter set, has a much more premium quality page. I compared this to some of the other books that I have, and those pages are much thinner. I often, as I was reading this, thought that I had two pages stuck together because the page is just that thick where it feels like it's too thick to be a single page. And I really like that. People are transporting these books back and forth. They're flipping through pages constantly. Having them be a little more durable seems like a good move. Now the battle maps are plentiful, but they are simplistic. We're talking black and white, old school feel like you sketched it yourself. Normally I like to get on Wizard's case about this. There are tons of extremely talented battle map artists out there on Patreon doing stuff on Reddit. However, given the volume that we get and sort of the format of this, it does kind of feel right here. And I don't think that this was necessarily a bad choice. So first I wanna talk about the Astral Adventurers Guide. One of the highlights of this book is the six playable races. All of these races have a good on a charm, the vast majority of them have some cool quirks and interesting mechanics that would be fun to play. For me, the auto gnome was a little bit weaker, but I still like this. This isn't like a clunker or a terrible race to play. I just thought the others had a little bit more going on and I would be excited to play almost any of these races. I think they're great additions. We also have two player backgrounds, a couple of magic items and a couple of spells and the mechanics for spell jamming and space travel. There are 16 ships and each has its own spread that has stats, a map, and some artwork. They're not just ships. These ships are formed after animals. Some of them have jaws that can bite. Others have living trees on them. There's a great variety of shapes and flavor here. And I think that that would make players want to see more and more as they know that there's tons of different types of ships out there. I don't think they will very quickly see them all. So there'll still be something new to throw at them. This volume of them gives you as a DM a good idea of stuff that you could just sort of throw in and make up on your own. We also have the Rock of Brawl City outlined in this section that has a little bit of political intrigue. And the Astral Adventurer's Guide is probably the one book out of the three that I wanted more from the most. There's not that that much in the way of magic items or spells or other additional stuff like that. But I do think it is a good framework to start running adventures in outer space. But to really have this setting, we're going to need monsters. And that's where Boo's Astral Menagerie comes in. It starts off with a chart by challenge rating, which I really like for people that are playing with physical editions. Although there are entire sections that are dedicated to families of monsters, the way that you have dragons of different ages and multiple things of the same species or same type of monster, there's still a solid variety in this 64 pages. And I don't think that you will get through all of them or wear them out super quickly. There's interesting things that the monsters will do like jammer scream or hull attachment. And I was just generally happy with the monsters that are provided in this book. And I'm also keeping in mind the fact that there is a monsters compendium with another set of about 10 monsters to add even more to this and expand out this setting. They're full of charm. They're full of quirkiness. I'm in. Boo's Astral Menagerie is a good book in this set. Out of the three books in this set, I thought Light of Xerixis was maybe going to be the one to sink it. I finished reading it today and it's solid. Yes, you're looking at an extremely linear adventure. This is set up to be played in an adventurer's league. Each chapter, which there are 12 of, is meant to be a two to three hour session. But if you think about space travel going from point to point, it almost makes sense of all types of adventures that one like this might be a little bit more linear. I think they brought their A team to this one. It's well written, it's well organized. There's a solid variety of types of encounters. It's not just all battles or all socialization. There are cliffhangers and different hooks. There are also forks 
Some of them are sort of the illusion of choice because eventually you do sort of get back on the same path, but it does allow for different things to happen throughout the adventure. If you have this ship still, if it got destroyed, if you have this NPC still, if she died, those types of things are outlined and there are ways to work around it and feel like your players are making meaningful choices, even if sometimes this is only the illusion of choice. <laughs> The book straight up calls out Flash Gordon as a huge inspiration and tone for this setting, even going so far as to recommend that your whole group might watch the movie before you start playing it to get a sense of the tone that it's going for. And that tone is episodic 80s campy sci-fi with twists and turns and cliffhangers at every bend. There is a free prequel adventure, Spelljammer Academy, that was released for this, and I would absolutely recommend skipping it. This is way above that quality. It doesn't have a lot of tie-ins. In fact, a strong tie to a homeworld, which isn't really developed in Spelljammer Academy, would be great for this. So doing your own adventure, doing another module or a starter set to lead into this would be a really strong way to get that tie to a homeworld or to towns and cities, people that your players might care about. So when there's a threat to it, that actually gives them a sense of stakes and maybe a motivation to want to go on this adventure. If you're planning to run a Spelljammer adventure but don't want to use a module, I would still strongly recommend reading this. First of all, there are entire chapters that you could just pull out and use as a session or two while still weaving your own story story with your own characters and not necessarily following their storyline. The second reason that I would read this whole book if you're planning to do Spelljammer is because it gives you tons of inspiration. What if your characters are stranded in the middle of space? What if there's a ghost haunting a ship? How do you handle those mechanics? What types of things can you pull off in this setting? That's all kind of outlined in here. And I think it does a great job of giving you ideas and inspiration for stuff that you could use in your own adventures. In this setting, there's a ton of time traveling from place to place. You know. Some of these journeys take days, weeks. A chapter like chapter seven gives you the idea of a couple games that they could play or things that they could do on these trips. The basic plot here is that there are seeds planted by an alien force on your character's homeworld that are infecting and eventually going to destroy it. So the characters have to set off in space and go fight the evil twin of an astral elf to save their planet. It will take the seeds months to destroy the homeworld. So there is a sense of stakes in that the entire planet could perish. However, you can go do little side adventures or have hiccups or things that you want to add in or explore as a GM. You don't have to only go session by session doing this. Additionally, Light of Xerixis outlines a couple of wild space systems that actually make it really easy for you to jump off and do one of those things. It has little blurbs about some of the planets that are enough to spark the imagination. And I think you could easily extend out sessions and add content to enrich your adventure with what's provided there. The last thing I want to say regarding this module is that I love the length of it. So many 5e adventure modules definitely take more than 15 sessions. They're entire books that go from level one to 10 or more. There aren't very many that are short like this outside of those starter boxes. I actually like an adventure that's 10 to 15 sessions. I think that's a good length and I'm glad that they've published something like that that's not a level one to four adventure. So our DM screen has a lot of random tables, which I really like. I find that when there's rules on a table, I tend to memorize them after a few sessions or not need to reference them so often, and the screen becomes kind of useless to me. I think it's a good approach for what they did here. Now, I wanna see more of this box set format from Dungeons and Dragons. No, I don't think every adventure should be this linear. I'd like to see more magic items or more elaborate battle maps. They need to shift the balance of things. They can't use the exact same format again and again without changing stuff. But look at what we got here. Six great playable races, tons of monsters, tons of ships, a short adventure that was really solid, even if it is linear. It's spread across three books, which I think if you DM in a physical space, this just gives you more pages to have open at once so you're not constantly flipping between pages. I really like what they've done here and I'm excited to dive deeper into it. Until then, keep rolling and have fun. Yeah.